Good morning and welcome to Inner West Council Library. We present an HSC lecture series in partnership with First Class Tutoring. But before all, I would like to acknowledge the traditional custodian of the land on which we produce this series, the Gadigal and Wangal people of the Ura Nation, and show my respect to their elders past, present, and emerging, and to all First Australian watching this series with us. Enjoy and good luck for your exam after a very, very hard year. I'm David Walker. And my aim today is to provide information so that you can be successful in your studies in the HSC in legal studies. Presentation today will take you through some tips on how to achieve HSC success. I aim to outline the exam structure, give you advice on how to prepare for HSC legal studies exams. In particular, I wish to focus on the glossary of terms used in the questions in the HSC and on the one term which is particularly important, which is evaluation and the effectiveness criteria. We wanna look at the nature of questions. So we'll look at the themes and challenges which are outlined in the syllabus. We'll look at some sample past HSC exam questions and we'll give you some advice on how to write better responses and to maximize the knowledge that you do have when you're attempting sample answers and past questions. First thing you should be thinking about if you want to be successful is how to be successful at home. You ask yourself a few questions. Are you completing the homework set by your teachers regularly? Are you preparing early and completing assessment tasks on time? Are you completing regular revision in every subject? Just remember, work that you studied in term four in year 11 will be accessible in the HSC. Do you still remember it now? Regular revision is necessary. Reality is many students can't positively answer those three questions and their academic progress therefore is not as good as it could be. Right now you have time to correct these issues, but time is running out. So let's give you some advice so you can start putting into practice and achieve to your potential. First of all, we're looking at the HSC course. The course is divided into three key parts. The core topics, part one, the crime, part two, human rights, and then the optional topics, the additional focus studies in part three. You must choose two optional focus studies from the seven options available. When we get to the exam, there is a specific exam structure. Section one has 20 marks allocated to it where you complete multiple choice questions taken from the human rights and crime topic areas. This is worth 20 marks one-fifth of the HSC exam mark. In section two, worth 30 marks, we have two parts, the short answer question on human rights with 15 marks and the extended response, little mini essay question on crime with 15 marks. Then section three, 50% of the exam marks, you must attempt two extended response questions, meaning proper introduction, body paragraphs and conclusion. There's two topics that you choose to study and there'll be two questions per topic where you have to choose one of those two questions for each of the two topics. When you're preparing for these exams, it's really important to start with the syllabus. The syllabus has got four key areas in it that you need to consider and you need to really consider all of these areas. In the syllabus, there's the learn two, which are the things that you are learning to be able to do the learn about, the content that you are focusing on. A lot of people neglect though to look carefully at the principal focus and the themes and challenges. And particularly in the recent years, the HSC exam questions have often been taken rather than from the learn about section of the syllabus, they're being taken from the principal focus and the themes and challenges. These vary with each of the four topic areas that you are required to study. When you're answering questions for the exam, you need to be working along the way to make sure you have extensive knowledge of common law cases, media articles, which help to evaluate the effectiveness of legal system, statute law or legislation, and then you need to have specific knowledge of a number of contemporary issues, legal issues from recent times. 
This slide here shows you an extract directly from the syllabus talking about the principal focus, the themes and challenges, the learn about and the learn to. And when you go into each part of the syllabus areas, you need to look very specifically at each of these four areas. Too many students learn uh, focus too heavily on the learn about areas and neglecting the other three important areas where questions can be taken from. Remember when we're sitting HSC exam in most school-based assessment tasks, the directive words or the verbs are really important so that you can properly understand the question. We need to remember when we're answering questions, we're not just learning, uh, we're not just focusing on what to write, that is the content, but we also need to focus on how we're going to uh, write our responses, the structure and the way that we address the verb that's given in the question. Understanding the verb is fundamentally important to properly, un properly understanding the question and you must really address the verb when you're writing your question out. Therefore, it's fundamentally important to understand exactly the requirements of each of the different verbs. The Board of Studies has provided us with a glossary of the meaning of these verbs. So rather than using the everyday English meaning of the verbs, uh, we need to really focus on what the Board of Studies or NESA now uh, has defined these verbs to mean. Some of the key ones you can see on this slide here, um, outline, describe, discuss, they're often used in the crime and human rights short answer questions. And in the um, focus areas, we often use more demanding verbs such as assess, evaluate, examine, justify. It's very important to know exactly the requirements of each of these verbs and make sure we meet those requirements when we're answering the questions. If you look at the things and challenges which a lot of students um, pay too little attention to, in human rights, the themes and challenges according to the syllabus are the changing understanding of the relationship between state sovereignty and human rights. Very easy to just sim simply put a verb in front of that, such as evaluate, and you could make up a HSC question along the lines of evaluate the effectiveness of the legal system in responding to the changing understanding of the relationship between state sovereignty and human rights. The other themes and challenges in human rights includes compliance and non-compliance. This uh, theme and challenge has directly been examined a number of times in topics in legal studies. Development of human rights as a reflection of changing values and ethical standards. Often students talk about the legal responses but they don't really give much evidence about what the changing values are and how the ethical standards have changed over time. Specific evidence of these things is needed. Law reform is a topic area which is focused in human rights, but also focused in a lot of the other topic areas as well. You need to know the whole law reform process and be able to specifically refer to examples of how the process was put into action and how effective that law reform process has been. Need to also focus when we're studying legal studies, both the legal and the non-legal measures that are used in human rights, the legal and non-legal measures used to protect human rights and how effective those measures have been. In the themes and challenges for crime, we see that there's a little bit of overlap, for example, issues of compliance and non-compliance in relation to criminal law. But we also have um, the first topic area, such as the role of discretion. And in the criminal justice system, we see a number of different areas of discretion, including police discretionary powers, but also judicial or the, the discretionary powers of judges. We're also looking here as moral and ethical standards changing again and law reform again. But we're also looking here at a criteria that, about the extent that the law balances the rights of victims, offenders and society. Do they get the balance right? Is justice achieved for all of those three interest groups? And again, finally, the legal and non-legal measures in achieving justice is examined in the crime topic. When we look at the themes and challenges and ta tabulate them and look at them together, we can see that some of the themes and challenges you can see at the top here in green are common to all of 
the human rights, the crime, and the focus studies such as family and the law. Some of the other themes and challenges are specific only to human rights. For example, the changing understanding of the relationship between state sovereignty and human rights. And others are specific only to crime. It's very important to know what themes and challenges from the syllabus are linked specifically to individual topic areas and be able to prepare essay questions so that you're ready to address these issues if they come up in the exams. One of the most often um, demanded skill in legal studies is the ability to evaluate the effectiveness of the law. Evaluate requires you um, to make a judgment based on a criteria. So it's very important to have, be able to link the content you've been studying to specific criteria. Here's some examples of some criteria that you could use with the abbreviations here ramp. Has justice been achieved? If justice has been achieved, the law is effective. If it has not been achieved, it's ineffective. And there's gradients in between. Is the law enforced? Is the rule of law applied? Is the legal system operating in a resource efficient system? On the other side, on the ramp side, we have the responsiveness of the law. How accessible is the law? Does it meet society's needs? And is it protecting individual rights? In past syllabus, it actually used to provide for you an effectiveness criteria. I constantly refer to this criteria when I'm teaching legal studies. This criteria you can see is very useful. We can see a criteria to uh, evaluate the effectiveness of the legal system for individuals to achieve justice and separately for society. And we need to remember that we need to get a balance between the rights of the individual and society for the legal system to be effective. This little um, table we have here, I would print out and I'd have it available so that every single time I'm learning content, I'll try to link the content to these criteria. And when I'm writing essays, this provides me criteria that I could use to evaluate whether the legal system is effective in achieving justice. Now, when we're, we're achieving justice, justice is not normally achieved totally or totally ineffective. We normally have shades of gray. So when we're talking about evaluating the effectiveness of the law, we need to be able to have uh, the modal words where intensifying or quantifying how effective. So keep in mind, we need to say the word effective and use these gray scales of effectiveness, very effective, greatly, extremely, utterly, totally, moderately, etc. Okay, let's move on to the multiple choice section. We've already found out that there is a certain number of multiple choice questions focusing on human rights and crime. And if we get more detail, there are tens, uh, there, the, the requirement is that there's 15 questions that focus on crime and five questions that focus on human rights. Again, even in the multiple choice questions, we need to really concentrate on the key terms and the verbs being asked in the question and the concepts. Some of the questions might require stimulus or a scenario to help you to answer the question. We'll show you some examples of these shortly. When answering the questions for multiple choice, we need to really identify exactly what the question is asking. Look at every specific word. Often an individual word in a question will really give you a big hint towards what the actual answer is. I would suggest when we're doing multiple choice, there are some that we naturally know the answers to, and there are some that we find difficult. If we do have to guess, we need to try to eliminate totally wrong answers first and work our way up to what is the likely answer when guessing. Hopefully, we're gonna know more answers than we have to guess. Here's some examples of some multiple choice questions. Human rights in Australia are best protected when they are. So we need to complete the sentence. This, is asking how are human rights best protected? First, understand the question. This is a learn about question from the syllabus. So in the syllabus learn about, it actually talks us to talk about how human rights are best protected. And the best way to protect human rights in Australia is by establishing Australian laws and those Australian laws will be enforced and therefore give us our human rights. So as much as the other answers, A, C, and D, help to protect human rights, the best way to protect human rights in Australia is by 
having Australian domestic laws? So the answer here is B. The word best is a very important word in this question. Every word means something. Look at this sample question. A person found dead in a, house, in a scene of a house fire. The police have evidence that the fire was lit on purpose. Which court would investigate the unexplained death? There's a stimulus in this question and we must interpret the question at the same time and we go to our syllabus. The syllabus talks about um, the powers and, and the roles of courts. Having understood the syllabus requirement to understand court levels and court roles, the answer to this is the coroner's court whose job is to investigate death and make reports to try to, to eliminate these type of causes of death. Here's a question where we're looking at assessing whether you understand a term or concept from the course. This question simply requires you to look at the syllabus and in the syllabus you'll find the term strict liability. This is asking, do you understand this syllabus term? What is a strict liability offence? And as we go through the answers, we know that a strict liability offence is unlike a normal offence where we need both actus reus and mens rea to be found guilty. In a strict liability offence, such as driving too fast on the road, speeding fines, actus reus alone must be proved. The answer is B. In this question, we're required to uh, look at the stimulus and interpret the meaning of the legislation. In 2006, the Crimes Legislation Amendment, Gangs Act, New South Wales came into force. This increased both police search powers and maximum sentences for gang-related offences. The passing of this act is an example of a law reform. So this shows that I can interpret the legislation provided and I can show an understanding of it. When I've changed the, the statute law in this case, we've reformed the existing law. It's not an example of police discretion. It's, it hasn't got to the judge yet, so it is not judicial discretion. Um, separation of powers is a different issue. Law reform is the answer. Can the High Court of Australia establish enforceable human rights? Here we have a question where we have to understand the role of the High Court, which is one of the syllabus requirements. And in this case, the answer is A, yes. The High Court can establish enforceable human rights by setting precedents. And this is a constitutional interpretation. Moving on to section two, the short answer questions and part B, uh, A, the short answers and part B, the extended response. In the short answer questions with 15 marks, we're assessing human rights. In the human rights question, the question is often broken down into three or four parts, an A, a B, a C, and sometimes even a D. Each of these parts have varying amounts of marks awarded to them. When looking at these questions, you need, again, to very carefully look at the verb. The verb will give you a hint on the extent that you need to write, as will the marks. Make sure when you're writing, you're concise, to the point, but at the same time, you're including legal facts. This is a legal studies exam, and a legal studies exam requires legal facts. Cases, legislation, examples. We could go on and get quotes from experts, members of society, statistics. You might need to interpret a stimulus in human rights. Um, so human rights involves short answer questions, an understanding of the verb, using evidence to support your answer, but writing concise to the point responses. When we move to human rights, if you look at the themes and charms that could be assessed in these A, B, C formats, we can look at the changing understanding of a relationship between state sovereignty and human rights. That in itself, that themes and challenge has been a, a past HSC question. We can look at issues of compliance and non-compliance, development of human rights as changing values and ethical standards. So we get new types of human rights, okay? Law reform regarding human rights. For example, the recent reform for gay marriage, extending human rights to marriage to gay relationships. If you have a look at the questions that have been asked over the last few years in this topic area, you can see from 2019, the question was broken up into an A, a B and a C. A and B both worth four marks, C worth seven marks. In 2018, it was broken up into four parts. A and B worth two marks, C worth five marks, D worth six marks. In 2017, the structure was only three, A worth three marks, B worth four marks, and C worth eight marks. 
It's very important that when you're answering the questions, you answer in terms of the verb, and you'll notice the short, the small marks have verbs such as outline, list, and the longer responses required by the higher level marks um, have how effective, so an assessment type question. You can see that in 2019, the C-level question, and 2017, the C-level question worth eight marks. Look at an example, we can talk about how effective international responses in enforcing human rights in your answer refer to legal evidence. So here we've got an answer, which is, you can see from here for a seven mark response, you can see the amount of writing you would need to do. We don't need to write a whole page. We don't need to write pages. We need to be writing concisely. But as you can see in this answer, we have specific references to cases such as in Syria and China. We're using legal terms such as state sovereignty. Um, we're talking about the criminal court. We've got specific legal facts, specific examples. In the marking criteria, you can see at the bottom, it talks about demonstrating a thorough understanding of international responses. So general wishy-washy answers won't cut it for a seven out of seven mark here. Our judgment must be informed, which means I make a judgment, but the judgment has supporting evidence. My judgment is informed by the evidence presented. Okay, so the marking criteria is if you look at the past papers and the criteria, the criteria give you an indication of the level you have to go to in order to achieve the full marks in these questions. Another question here you can again see this is an eight mark question, the 2017 paper. And you can see this person is broken up into four uh, very concise paragraphs, but the paragraphs have specific reference to uh, United Nations conventions, statute laws, royal commissions. So the general arguments are supported with a series of specific legal evidence as reflected in the criteria. The criteria says demonstrates an extensive understanding of one human, human rights issue. And it says informed judgment using a criteria. So that there's a need to go back to that table where you can see the criterias, apply two, three maybe of the criterias, support those criterias with specific legal factual evidence. And we have an eight out of eight type response. Question 23, um, from the feedback from the NESA can see that the better responses for students were able to demonstrate a detailed understanding of their chosen human rights issue. They were able to provide a thorough understanding of international responses, so we can quote international law, a sustained and informed judgment, which means we have a judgment and that judgment is consistently supported with evidence. Examples and evidence used um, and in this case, the criteria such as is the law enforced um, are used to el uh, el elicit an argument. When we move to section two, the part B response worth 15 marks, we're talking about a question which may or may not have a stimulus in it. We're talking about approximately 600 words or about four of the HSC writing booklets. We really need to focus on the meaning of the verb and how to address that verb in proper writing. And we have to be concise, but at the same time as being concise, limiting ourselves to four pages, we need to include consistently use of legislation, cases, specific examples, and key legal terminology rather than using common English words and concepts. The themes and challenges, again, are often assessed in the HSC exams. Fundamentally important that you understand the themes and challenges, you have evidence to back up all of the themes and challenges, and you can link the themes and challenges to what we, the content we have to learn about within our syllabuses. In crime, when we're looking at the learn about part of the syllabus, you can see that there's six key areas, the nature of crime, the criminal investigation process, the criminal trial process, sentencing and punishment, young offenders and international crime. When I'm looking at the question, I'm looking straight away to see what one of these six areas of the syllabus is being assessed. As soon as I work out which area is being assessed, I'll go back to my syllabus and think, 
under that heading of the syllabus, what are all the things listed? And I need to pull out ideas from those things listed to provide evidence in my argument. If we look at the a, a summation of the past papers, we can see um, the variety of questions being asked from 2011 to 2019. Some of these questions are taken directly from the themes and challenges. So for example, 2018, we can see discuss the use of discretion in the achieving justice. That is very much from the themes and challenges. Um, if you look at 2016, the criminal justice system must treat young offenders. This is directly from the syllabus bullet point areas uh, requiring you to understand young offenders. So note the questions can be asking um, to you to understand the content directly from the syllabus bullet point of content to be assessed, but also could come from the themes and challenges. Need to remember that you're ready to answer questions from both of those areas. It's really important to do that. So if you look at this question, to what extent does the sentencing and punishment process balance the rights of victims and offenders in society? Straight away, I see that there's no specific use of the, the terminologies, but it uses the phrase, to what extent? To what extent, to me, takes me straight away to the word assess or evaluate. I need to make a judgment on the extent that sentencing and punishment pro uh, processes balance the rights of offenders, victims, and society. If I look at sentencing punishment, the silver bullet points, which you can see to the left, Straight away, when I'm thinking about sentencing and punishment, I, I should go straight to the syllabus and think, in my essay, I could talk about statutory and judicial guidelines. Now, if we have a judicial, a, a statutory guideline which limits judicial discretion, um, this will take away uh, the justice from an offender when he's sentenced because the sentence might not always match the crime and the judicial discretion is removed. Straight away when I see this question, I look at the sentencing and punishment and I think about the type of penalties, alternative methods of sentencing. All of these things stimulate things that I could talk about in my response. You can see in this response that this person has written, um, he's, he's using as his criteria um, the balancing needs of offenders in society. So how well is the legal system balancing the rights of the offenders and the rights of society? And he's specifically talking about the Terrorism Police Powers Act, so reference to a statute. He's giving details of the statute. Further down, he's talking about Les Leslie Lovins, um, um, the Secretary of the New South Wales Council of Civil Liberties. So he's quoting an expert. He's supporting his answer with um, some specific legal factual evidence. This is a good answer. When we're looking at the question, we've also got to remember there is the rubric. So when you're responding to section two, it says on the actual HSC paper, your answer will be assessed on how well you do these four bullet points. You must be able to demonstrate knowledge and understanding. You must be able to communicate using relevant legal terminology. So not only do you need to use the, the terminology of the subject, you need to be able to effectively communicate. You need to write in succinct, logical manner proper paragraphs, introduction, body paragraphs, conclusion. It says there in the third bullet point that you, you must refer to legislation, cases, media, international instruments and documents. You must have a variety of legal evidence and you must sustain your answer. Your answer must be organised in a logical manner and it must be cohesive and easy to read. So there's a lot of guidelines of exactly what you are expected to achieve when you're writing your answer. It's not just a matter of um, spewing out all the content you know. You must very carefully choose the content, address the verb, assess in this case, and support your answer in a logical, cohesive manner with legal terminology and lots of legal evidence. When we're answering crime questions, um, most of the questions require you to talk about an assessment or an evaluation. These days, rather than using the word assessment or evaluate, they're using the phrase to what extent, which fundamentally means you need to make an assessment of the extent of effectiveness of the legal system. You need to use language of assessment. So you need to use phrases such as, it is effective because, 
constantly be using the word effective or ineffective in your answer so that the, the person marking your paper sees that you're addressing the verb assess, evaluate. To what extent means that you make a judgment based on size, outcome, value, quality? To evaluate means you make a judgment based on a criteria of your chosen. If you look to the right again at the table that I showed you earlier, there's a criteria there. For individuals, the legal system is effective if it's applied equally, it's accessible to all, it's enforced, etc. For society, if it's resource efficient, if it reflects community standards, etc. These are criteria that you can go to very easily to mount arguments to answer these type of questions. Remembering at the bottom though, we must refer to the cases, legislation, media reports, statistics and examples as the rubric indicates prior to the question. When we're writing our responses, we need appropriate paragraph and essay um, structure. So we need uh, to have topic sentences. We need to introduce the argument in individual paragraphs by having a topic sentence. So in this case, in response to that question, law is not without its limitations. There's an assessment there when it comes to balancing the rights of offenders, victims, society, and the criminal justice system. This is my introduction topic sentence for my paragraph. From here, I go on to explain, give evidence and examples to elaborate on the topic opening sentence. If we introduce supporting evidence, um, we need to elaborate further on it. So when we're bringing in evidence, we say things such as, the effectiveness of reforms has been supported by former Director of Public Prosecutions, Nicholas Cowdery, who states, this is how I, I would introduce um, the opinion of an expert such as Nicholas Cowdery. I would introduce him by naming him, telling me his role, and then if I can quote him or paraphrase. We can say things like the lack of compliance is further highlighted within Bosca, Boxar report. I could refer to the report and then either quote or paraphrase information from the report. This is the way that we present evidence in legal studies. When I'm finishing my paragraph, it's really important to make a link back to the question. So as I'm explaining my answer and as I'm summing up my individual paragraphs, I need to refer to the words from the question and the verb from the question, such as evaluate, I need to be linking back to it. So if you look at the bottom here, I'm finishing my paragraph by saying hence or therefore, demonstrating the ineffectiveness, so I'm commenting on effectiveness of the criminal justice system, that's the topic in question, in alleviating the tensions between the rights of offenders and the protection of society. I'm also saying things like, thus clearly highlighting the effectiveness of such reforms. When I use the words from the question such as effectiveness, justice system, offenders, society, it really gives the marker of the ability to say, this person is addressing the question and answering the question directly. This is well rewarded in the marking scheme. When I'm required to evaluate, it's really important to have phrases that you're familiar with, which become valuations. So on this page here, we can see a lot of examples of evaluation type statements. Hence the law undermines the protection of individual rights. There's an evaluation there, the legal system is undermining. Despite popular opinion, the law has failed to meet the society's needs. The word failed is an evaluation. It's saying that the legal system is not working. It has failed, etc. If you look at these statements, it's really good to be able to have these statements in your mind and be ready to go with them so you can link your content to summative statements such as these, where I'm bringing things together and I'm linking back to the question. If we look at the question, to what extent are courts the only means of achieving justice within the criminal justice system? Straight away, I look at the syllabus. The criminal investigation process tells me bail and remand is a way that we can achieve justice. The criminal trial process says charge negotiation and the role of the jury. Sentencing and punishment gives me statutory and judicial guidelines, etc. Young offenders gives me information, international crime, so when I remember these five syllabus bullet point areas, if I think about the question, think about those five bullet point areas, 
this will help me brainstorm out ideas that I could use to elaborate a response to this question. Always go back to your syllabus every single time you look at a question and be aware that in topics areas such as crime, there are five key syllabus areas and I need to know the headings underneath each, underneath each of those syllabus areas. If we move on to section three, the extended response. In section three, in the optional topics, we need to answer two essay questions, one essay question out of a choice of two from each of the topics. Two options, there's seven options available. Your school will be studying two of them. You must answer one question from each of the two options. There's a choice of two questions from each option. The length of the responses is guided by the marks awarded. It's 25 marks per essay. That means that's about one quarter of the exam time, which is 45 minutes. So in 45 minutes, I would suggest you should be able to write about a thousand words or eight writing pages. Now in marking HSC exam, I've seen people write 12, 15 pages in responses to uh, essay questions. I've also equally seen people write one or two pages. The people who are writing one or two pages certainly uh, fail to write in the scope that requires is required to get decent marks. When looking at essay questions, take very careful note of the verb used in the question. With re relevance to the content, am I asked to explain the content, analyze the content, outline the content, evaluate the content. When you're answering your questions, you have limited time, be concise in your answer, but at the same time, you must use evidence to support everything you're saying. When you're writing, don't use common English words, use legal terms and legal concepts. You will be rewarded for it. The teachers are trying to examine whether you are understanding the syllabus and the best understanding of the syllabus is shown by use of the concepts, use of the terms, and use of evidence to back up your general ideas. If we have a look at a, one of the pages from the HSC exam papers, we move on to section three, and what you'll see when you get to section three, it'll say up the top, attempt two questions from question 25 to 31, and you must answer a different question, a one question from each option. So if your school is studying consumers in the law, you would look at question 25 and say, I would have to answer either question 25A or question 25B. If I cannot answer two questions from one topic, I have to answer one question from each of the two chosen topic areas. This means that in question A for the consumers, you would need to evaluate, make a judgment based on a criteria. And question B, you would need to assess. If you look at those two questions, you can see that those questions basically are both taken from um, the syllabus, the top one from the learn to, or the learn about areas of the syllabus, the bottom one from the themes and challenges. So it shows very clearly we need to be prepared to answer questions from both the bullet points and from the themes and challenges part of the syllabus. When we get a question, we need to spend time analysing it. I see too many students walking into the exam, sitting down, reading the question once and starting writing like a champion. There, there is time to think, plan, organise prior to writing. One of the easiest ways to uh, organise your understanding of the question is to use highlighters, for example. Break the question back into parts and make sure you address every part in your answer. In this case, in the blue, we have what to what extent. We're not using the word evaluate or assess but that's what's required by the phrase to what is extent. So I know I have to make an assessment or an evaluation. I need to understand what I'm assessing. I'm asking whether the law is adequately protecting family members. Is it adequate? Is it inadequate? Is it somewhere in between? Where's my evidence to support this? And when we're talking about protecting family members, we're specifically asking you to talk about birth technology and surrogacy. So you must confine yourself only to issues surrounding birth technology and surrogacy. Students that go beyond that don't get rewarded because they're not addressing the key issues in the question. When you break your question down like that and you read through your answer, you, you make sure that you, you have addressed all of those parts of the question because every part of the question needs to be addressed. If we're looking at feedback, 
it's very important to look at the feedback provided by NESA on the internet when we go to the um, syllabus documents and the feedback to the exams. So in here in the general feedback, it's saying that students should do all of these things if they want to be rewarded well in the marking criteria. Have a clear understanding of the key words in the question. Demonstrate that in your answer. Recognise their different requirements, such as what is the difference between evaluate, assess and explain? If your answer is the same, no matter what the verb is, your answer is probably wrong. The content could be similar, but the way you have to point it would be depend on whether the verb is evaluate, assess, explain, etc. I'll leave you to read this yourself, but there's a lot of very good advice there. If you follow this advice and these bullet points about what is required in your answer, it's a very good advice towards making sure you have um, detailed but succinct and supported essays, which will be rewarded well. How do I write a better answer? I, I, number one, avoid content dumping. The question doesn't ever say, write down everything you know about legal studies. Content dump, if you like, on your plan and then go through your plan and organise it and hopefully you're going to have things on your plan that you don't use and you just pull out the key arguments, the key evidence, the key points. Make sure all of your con content is specifically related to the question asked. Second point, make sure you address all the words in the question. Every word in the question will give you a hint and give you a direction of what to do. Make sure when you read the question, you clearly read every single word in the question and address each question separately in your answer. Don't over-describe cases. Um, we don't need to know every single detail of the case. We need to know the key points in the case, but more importantly, we need to know the outcome of the case. Did they win the case? Did they lose the case? What was the judge's ruling? Was there a sentence? Was there a penalty? How how severe was the sentence? How strong was the penalty? By all means, plan your answers. Look at the past papers. They very much overlap and repeat themselves. Look at the past papers, attempt them all, plan them all, write them all. But be very careful when you're looking at your exam paper this year that you make sure you understand that this is a different question. Use the content from your planned answers, but point it in the right direction. Do not have pre-planned answers which are inflexible. Plan your answers, but change them in relation to the actual question you're answering. Point five, I'd say should really be point one. Know all aspects of the syllabus. As soon as you understand what's being assessed in the question, make sure you know all of the elements of that bullet point so you've got more things to talk about and you can choose appropriate content from a wide range of content. Be familiar with the BOSTES terms. Understand exactly what evaluate means, what assess means, what discuss means. Even some of my smartest students are able to spill out a lot of information, but quite often don't point it in the right direction because they don't understand the meaning of the term and don't address the term correctly. Very good responses make consistent links to the question. We don't want you to put out all the evidence and all the arguments without, and then at the very end, linking it back to the question. We want you to consistently link everything you're saying back to the question. One of the easiest ways of doing that is to make sure you're using the words from the question consistently in your answer. Second point, present a variety of issues to, to assess. Please don't confine yourself to just one idea, one case, one issue. In order to get a, an A grade mark, we need to have a broad understanding and a broad understanding requires you to be able to talk about more than one issue and quite often more than one criteria. Use a variety of legal evidence. Supporting your, your arguments with just simply a statute or a case is not good enough. Within your answer, you should have a statute, a case, some quotes from the media, some expert opinions, some statistics. There should be a broad range of evidence to support your general conclusions. And use the syllabus specifically. Use the words from the syllabus and the ideas from the syllabus. 
Weaker response, weaker responses make statements that are unsupported. Therefore, it's not really judgment, it's just an opinion. They mostly describe and they, they fail to use the information they've described to link back to an argument. They fail to use a variety of evidence. So they, they rely too heavily on one or two examples and they are unable to go beyond the one or two examples to support their argument. They also fail to cite their evidence. They'll tell me that 50% of people do something, but they don't tell me where they got that 50% number from. If you don't cite your evidence, your evidence is very uh, of little importance. Strategies for answering better questions or for producing better answers. Write answers under exam conditions at home. When you go home and you do a sample question, put the clock on, put away your cheat notes, write the response from the top of your head. If needs be, when you finish that, you can then go and do further research to see what gaps you had in your knowledge. But practice putting yourself under exam conditions, timed without cheat notes. Focus on paragraph writing rather than full responses. Quite often I can, um, I'm short of time, but if I look at the past papers and I say, I'm going to respond to that question by writing two good paragraphs. There I'm getting practice in responding to the question, but I'm also getting practice writing my response in a proper paragraph. Remember this, that you're marked based on what you write, not what, based on what you know. And one of the things you have to be able to demonstrate is that you can write a proper paragraph. So if you're practicing exam papers and you're writing them out in bullet point form or in an abbreviated form, um, well, you're not really practicing the skill that you need to demonstrate of writing a full proper paragraph. Organize your notes under the themes. When you're making uh, summary notes under the syllabus bullet points, after you've done that, make separate su summary notes under the themes and challenges so that you can then link the different syllabus bullet points to the themes and challenges. And when they ask a question from the themes and challenge, you can instantly think, oh, I have all of these bullet points under that in my mind that I can refer to. Have up-to-date notes. Um, it's really important to have recent cases recent statistics, recent people's opinions, especially if we have to talk about reflecting community standards and expectations. We need to know what the standards are. We need notes which are up to date to know what they are. Attempt past papers. The more you can do that, the more you know what you're up for. Chunk your information. Break it down into small parts. Learn, learn one section of the time, become familiar with one section, move on to the next section, but then go back to that earlier section and retest your knowledge. And the last point there, use effective examples. Try to find examples that can link to more than one area of the syllabus. It can link to more than one of the things and challenges or more than one of the syllabus bullet points. Find examples that are effective and flexible. Avoid content dumping. Um, hate to see examiners um, uh, reading questions where people are just spewing out everything they know, whether it's relevant to the question or not. Okay. Um, most times we need you to write specifically, concisely, only related to the question. In the shorter answer questions, make sure you respond to the verb. If it says outline, it requires a very short answer. If it says identify, you only need the name of the thing. You don't need even the proper sentences. Re respond to the verbs, avoid content dumping, interpret the question and answer as, in as detailed as you can with as, um, in a succinct manner. Make sure you address all parts of the, the question. Um, often questions have more than one part to them and students focus too strongly on one part and ignore the other. So in this 2011 HSC exam question, it says explain the tension between community interest and individual rights and freedoms within the criminal justice system. A poor answer would talk a lot about community interests and neglect the rights of the individual to show the balance. We need to address all parts of the question and every word is important. In the 2011 question, the key word there is tension. Use that word consistently your answer. Every time you're talking about something about the community, talk about how that is in tension 
with the individual rights. In 2012, to what extent are ports the only means of achieving justice? So there you can talk about how the courts are a means of achieving justice, but how other methods are used to achieve justice. And then you can come to the extent that courts are the only means. So address all parts of the question, understand the question, highlight the key words in the question, make the question known and understandable to yourself so that you can respond to it as best you can. Don't over describe cases. When you're naming a case, we have an example here. I'll read it. Most recently, law reform has made a drastic attempt to better, better balance community needs and individual rights in relation to bail. Excellent topic sense. The new Bail Act 2013 removes all presumptions related to bail and uses an unacceptable risk test instead. I've, in one sentence, I've referred to the Bail Act and I've described all the detail I need to know about the Bail, the bail Act in order to answer this part of the question. I don't need elaborate detailed notes on the Bail Act. I just need to know what was the decision? How is it useful? Avoid pre-planned answers. And when I say that, I mean plan answers. Do as many past papers as you can. Get feedback on them. Make them as well as you can. But when you get into the exam, don't just look at the topic and spew out that prepared answer. Reinterpret the question. Understand the question. Use the content from planned answers, but point it in the direction of the, the words from the question. Students will not gain the full marks if the question is not addressed. Simply writing out a prepared answer is very unlikely to properly address the question. You must address the question. The best way of that to do that is to make sure you sum up every paragraph using the key words from the question. Most importantly of all, know all aspects of the syllabus. You need to know the students learn to part of the question. The students learn about part of the question the principal focus, which is typically justice and the themes and challenges. The question could come from any one of those four areas. How do we study? Well, I think the best methods of study are outlined on this sheet. First of all, have a good set of study notes that you put together from different sources. Make them your study notes. It's very easy to go to websites and get other people's study notes, but it's the process of creating your own study notes which gives you the understanding and helps you to interact with it and therefore remember it. By all means, use look at other people's study notes, but create your own. Compare your study notes with other students. Work out what gaps you have in your knowledge, what other students have included that you need to include, and things that you could delete from your own. Look at your textbooks, which are written by experts and giving you a brief overview of the bullet points and the syllabus requirements. Don't confine yourself to the textbooks, however. Follow the syllabus headings. I would make notes under every syllabus bullet point heading. I would then make notes under every theme and challenge heading um, so that I'm extremely familiar with the syllabus. You need up-to-date statistics, evidence and expert opinions. You need quick quotes from newspapers. You need to get information from legal websites and the LILAC site. Check with the syllabus that you have covered all areas of the syllabus. There are not gaps in your knowledge. Every part of the, assess, uh, the syllabus can and will be assessed over time. Learn the study notes by breaking them down into sections and topics. Every time I say a certain heading, you should be able to list in bullet points the information that should appear underneath that heading. That will allow you to brainstorm content for the questions as you'll manage them. After you've done those note-taking processes and chunking processes and getting the information into your head and understood, then you need to apply the knowledge. Please remember this, it's the application of the knowledge which is the most important because we mark you on what you've written on the piece of paper, not what's in your head. Attempt past papers, write out responses, Get feedback to those responses from your mates, working groups, also from your teachers. Look at other people's uh, essay answers and ask yourself, what did they do that I didn't, that I could in include in my answer? So consistently proven technique of completing practice papers is an excellent way of approaching preparation for exams. Time your questions, make sure you 
only spend the 45 minutes required in the um, focus areas and practice being able to write those pages in the time you're given. Make note of any areas that you are unsure on. Go back to your notes and reread and restudy sections where you aren't able to answer the question off the top of your head and continue this process repeatedly. If you go to the NESA samples, the exemplar answers available on the internet, if you go to the HSC workbooks, um, there's lots of information about past exam papers and sample responses at all the different levels. You can look at the poorer responses and work out what are the mistakes that they've made that I'm going to avoid. Look at the excellent responses and see how can I emulate them? What is it about their answers that were rewarded? If you look at note taking, too many students write notes which are far too detailed. You need to be basically bring a lot of content down to short, brief bullet points. And once remembering the bullet point, you're able to expand them out into paragraphs. Don't write paragraphs. Remember bullet points and be able to turn those bullet points into paragraphs. So in this case here, if we're talking about the criminal investigation process, you can see here where we've got the Evidence Act. You've got an opinion in bold from Michael Kirby. You've got cases. You've got another opinion. So we've got the use of bold and colour to highlight keywords. So as I'm going through these notes, I might not even read all of the notes. I look at the key bolded words and ask myself, what do I remember? And if I can't remember, I then go to the notes and re, re um, visit these pieces of evidence. Another way that people uh, remember, and this is one that I do, I compartmentalise my knowledge by breaking all of my knowledge down into tables. So legislation, themes and challenges, is it effective, is it ineffective? Um, if I organise my notes, knowing that the exams are mostly going to ask me about the effectiveness of the legal system, I'll always have a content uh, column, and then I'll have a column about what about this content shows me the legal system is ineffective, and what is it about this content which shows the legal system is effective? So straight away, I've got a table which allows me to mount an argument of effectiveness. Here we have a student who's put together a table um, um, looking at media articles. So the, art, the name of the article that I can quote in my essay, some bullet points summary of the key points of the article and a link to the syllabus bullet points. So when I get this syllabus, I know that I refer to this article and here's a brief summary of the key points from the article that I need to remember. It's all written in bullet points. I say in this case, the bullet points are too detailed. I'd abbreviate it down into um, sentences that don't even make grammatical sense, that simple words and phrases. Finally, I'd like to wish you all the best of luck in your studies for the HSC. When I say luck, I mean hard work because hard work equals success. I'm hoping I've given you an idea of how the syllabuses operate, how the HSC exam papers are formulated and a successful method of revision and a way of answering, especially using the verbs, evaluate, assess, etc. Thank you to these resources that have helped me put this program together and good luck to you all.